nice fall day in Arizona, finally starting to cool down. A little bit, not a lot. But I'm excited, so I'm gonna take you with me to go into Fry's Marketplace and get some stuff for making keto bagels and keto bread for the first time. Let's go. Okay, you guys, this is kind of funny. This is total goals for my keto bagels, right? But these are like 14 to 20 carbs. It just kind of depends on the size of your regular bagel. So we're gonna make our healthy version and I'm super excited about it. Okay, so first thing I wanna get is an avocado because I'm having a major craving for avocado toast, which I haven't had in a really long time doing keto. So I'm gonna look for one of these really good ones and get the rest of my stuff. Okay, so they have all kinds of mozzarella choices and I wanna go organic possibly, 349 and then 329 for Sargento. Honestly, this is just such good flavor, so we're gonna go with this guy. Get some of this pepper jerky too. It is my favorite full of flavor. We'll put a little bit of this on the bread, hopefully, or a sandwich of some kind. For recipe, we also need some cream cheese, so grab a couple sticks of this, any kind that you like, but this is what I'm going with. Because I'm kind of experimenting with my recipe, I don't think that you need butter. Oh, this one's kind of messed up. But I'm gonna probably put some on mine after I toast either a piece of bread or the bagel, and I think it's gonna be really good, and this one's my favorite. Okay, and then we also need eggs. So I'm gonna grab some of my favorites. I like the cage-free brown organic. People are so weirded out by brown eggs, but they are the best. And get about a dozen, so we're gonna need six for at least the bread, and I know we need one or two for the bagels as well. Really good things about coconut flour, so I might try this guy, but the one that I'm gonna experiment with today will be calling for almond flour. So I'm kind of mixing together several recipes to see what will be best, so we're gonna try this guy. I have powdered stevia at home from Trader Joe's, but this one is looking pretty good, and I've never tried liquid stevia, so I'll let you know what I think. Apparently it makes it taste less egg-like in the bread. We are ready to check out. I definitely don't need this, but it is pumpkin spice season, and I'm in love. Okay, one more thing I wanna pick up before I leave is the bubbly water that I love when I put my apple cider vinegar drink together. Of course, it's low supply and there's one left, but the grapefruit is my favorite. I'm outside and get cooking. Say hi, YouTube world. Say hi, everyone. I'm Bruno. How are you? We've been watching HGTV. Don't mind our house. We're totally redoing a bunch of things, so that's why there's stuff everywhere. But yeah, let's go. Let's go outside. Let's go play. What do you think? Wanna go play? Okay, I'm gonna cook while you play. I love you. It's a good boy, okay. So if you are on a keto diet and you want to do it for weight loss purposes besides just healthy eating, implement this just for a couple days and see how much better you feel. It's not for you, it's not for you, and honestly don't chug it because that can hurt your stomach. So I call this a sipper. Sip on it. Definitely get a straw because if not, it's bad for your teeth. Good for everything else. So there you go. Okay. Let's get cooking. So first up, we're gonna melt down the mozzarella and the cream cheese and get it to be just a little bit more easy to work with. So use your microwave to do that. A couple minutes, we'll see. I'll let you know in a second. Okay, so I went ahead and microwaved the mozzarella and the cream cheese. I'm just gonna get this all worked in together as the first step here. So microwave for about good 50 seconds. Okay, and then we're gonna add in the almond flour and get that mixed in and a little splash of baking powder. So just a little bit to try to help them to rise a bit. So I just do about a little more than a tablespoon. Just eyeball it. You really can't mess that part up too bad. But like for my sister who's allergic to nuts and couldn't do almond flour, you could always switch to coconut flour, which I hear is just as good too. So I'm willing to try that one next. If anyone wants to see that, let me know in the comments. Okay, so mine was getting a little difficult to stir together. So I popped in the microwave for a few more seconds and then we wanna add one of our eggs and start to now blend with our hands. So I'll have to come back with the final product for you. Okay, so this is the consistency you're looking for. You want it to look just like dough. So it's called fathead dough. You can use it for pizza. You can use it in sweet treats like uh, baking items, cinnamon rolls. Um, I can use it in sweet treats like sweet rolls. So many different things, but for today we're going to use it for bagels, so it's not going to be sweetened and we're going to top it with just everything but the bagel seasoning after we get them into bagel shapes. I have heard from a couple different people to use water instead of using um, olive oil or butter to brush your bagels with before they're cooked so that you can add your seasoning. 
they burn less, so we're gonna try that and see how it works. Okay, so how do you know what size to make your bagels? I'm gonna make four relatively big ones, and I'm just gonna measure them out like this and then start to form them into bagel shape. So I just form them the size of my hand to start. Okay, so with clean hands, now that I have my bagels formed, they're all a little bit different in size, but Owen said that they had to be beautiful. Tap a little bit of water, you can use a paintbrush, you can use any sort of brush, cooking brush that you have, and then I'll wipe up all the other water so it doesn't burn. And let's add our seasoning. Okay, so definitely looking a lot more like bagels. We're gonna be putting this into a 400 degree oven for about 12 to 15 minutes, and then just kind of check on it after 12 and then pop them out. You can toast them and put butter on them later and let's see how they turn out. Okay, so now we're moving on to the bread. We're gonna do six egg whites in this bowl and a little bit of the cream of tartare. I will put all the ingredients in the bottom for both recipes and let's get started. So with step one, I separated my egg whites from my egg yolks, saving the egg yolks. I put the six egg whites and a little bit of the cream of tartare in here and I'm just gonna be blending it in the blender. <laughs> a very creamy consistency with the egg white mixture here. We're gonna put that back into the bowl and then we're gonna blend our egg yolks with a little bit of butter and I'll show you that step. Put our egg white mixture here, gonna go back into the bowl now that it's nice and formed together. We wanna have that foam also go into it and let's get started on the next step. Okay, so our bagels are done. They are golden brown. They look really delicious. They smell amazing. They are soft, so we want to give them a few minutes to rest, and then we can start to enjoy these. Okay, let's move on to the next part. I've got some melted butter here. I'm going to pop my egg yolks into my blender. Try to get them all in there. Go back if we need to get the rest of this. Got my melted butter here. I'm going to add in. And then we're gonna do a little bit of baking soda once this is blended together. Okay, so I just added in the almond flour, a little bit of baking soda, and then I'm gonna add some pink Himalayan salt. Okay, so we have our almond flour in here, we have our egg yolks, our butter, salt. We're gonna add the egg whites now to the mixture. In a lot of recommendations to add liquid stevia, so I'm gonna put one to two drops in the final mixture, give it a go, and then let's get this in the pan. Okay, so those are still smelling really good. We're about to pop our bread in the oven. We've got this coconut oil nonstick spray. You can use whatever kind of nonstick you want for your bread baking pan here and then pour it on in. Really hard to get in here. It is dough consistency texture when you get it out of the blender. So that should be pretty obvious, but I kind of forgot that part. So we'll pop it in the oven now at 375 for about 30 minutes and it's a big experiment with this one. I've never tried something like this and I'm super excited to see if it'll turn out. Okay, so based on the nutritional facts for these, I really only want to eat one. So I'm going to put a little bit of mustard and then I have some mayo that I haven't tried yet, but it looks good. And then I've got my pepper turkey from earlier and I cut this in half already. And as you can see, it's like a bagel thin. So if you've ever been to like Einstein's before, and you get a thin bagel, it's the same exact thing. So final review on this so far, I would have to say just for my first bite alone, I will totally be making these again. Great meal option, especially when you really wanna treat yourself and full of flavor, very messy, time consuming, but I would definitely say it's worth it. I probably wouldn't even change anything that I tried in the recipe, so delish. Okay, so I feel like for you two, I have to get out all the cute stuff, right? So this is from Target a couple years ago. I love this little plate. This is not hot anymore, it's now cooled down, so we're gonna somehow transfer it over here and get slicing to take a look at it. I'm really nervous about the transfer, but it totally just fell out, so that coconut spray really did help a lot. I'm getting to the slicing here. These are small but thick. I'm still letting out a lot of steam. I don't know if you can see this, but very, very fresh, like brand new out of the oven, right? I've never made bread before, so this is really cool to me. <laughs> Taste test, um, I'm not sure. I really wanted to do like a avocado toast situation, but this doesn't look like it can really toast it. So I'm gonna try to cut some of these back ones a little thinner and see how that works. Okay, so I just did a little taste test on this guy from the middle to try it hot and fresh out of the oven just for fun. And it very much reminds me of bread, a very thick bread. It is sweet a little bit, but not crazy sweet. So it has a little tiny bit of sweetness. I just did two little squirts of stevia 
the liquid stevia in there. So not overpoweringly sweet. However, um, I would say that this needs to be a little less eggy. So I think whatever you put onto it, it'll absorb some of the flavor of the egg taste that it has, um, but not terrible. I definitely like the keto bagels more, but I could see myself liking this if I cut it thin, maybe toast it, and we're gonna do a little avocado toast to see if that will work. Okay, so while the toast is toasting, I'm gonna be frying an egg with a little bit of salt and pepper, so pink Himalayan salt and pepper. Put a little bit of smashed avocado on the toast, and then we're gonna do a little bit of red pepper flakes as well. Okay, so I have not toasted anything in a really long time. I just had to clean out my toaster just to make sure because it's been sitting here unused since I started keto. I did put the um, bread just to the side there is long in length, so we're just gonna experiment this and see if it's any good. Like a little crostini or something. It definitely is not your average size toast. Like this is my hand and this is the toast. So it's very small, which is actually really good if you're being conscious of carbs and you're being conscious of your eating, but um, I don't know if an egg will fit on here. I guess we'll see. Okay, so final result. I've got a mini version of avocado toast here. Avocado with a little bit of salt and pepper. Then we smash it up. Sometimes it's good with a little bit of lemon or lemon juice on there too. A little extra potent flavor. And then I've got some red pepper flakes in there. A little spice. If you don't like spicy, do without. I cut my fried egg in half and only half of the avocado and half of the egg fit on here. That's like a nice little, I don't know, version of the toast. I guess if you did two tiny little halves and toasted two little pieces and then did the same thing on another side, you would be all set. So super good, I'm about to enjoy this and let you know what I think. Okay, so from that taste test, tastes just like avocado toast, super good. Like I've had um, made by myself before that I've gotten in a restaurant, really tasty. The bread is a little bit sponge-like, so what I would do differently since I wanna toast it and have it be a little thinner, I would probably just experiment with cooking it a little bit longer to firm it up a bit. I'm okay with it being a little bit crispy. I would probably also do without the stevia, just personally, would rather have it taste like bread and not like sweet bread but you know pretty good for my first try and then this one with the bagels over here was definitely my favorite so i'll totally be making these ones again and experimenting with this one again if you plan on making your own keto bread and your own keto bagels whether they're everything bagels or any kind of keto bagel i will leave the um, steps but also the ingredients list at the bottom for anybody that wants to try the way that I did it, you can kind of doctor it up, substitute and change things. That's the best part of keto is just playing around, experimenting and see what's delicious and what works for you. So if you like this kind of video, remember to give it a thumbs up, liking it, subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future and thanks so much for watching.